uh, Monday is the first official work day of the week, and uh, today is another Monday to talk uh, issues as it, as it affects our dear nation, Nigeria, and also as it affects our dear state, Abia State. Welcome to the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions. It is still part of our morning show right here, the one we call Morning Spies, of course. Uh, we deal with those issues every Monday, every Wednesday, and also every Friday right here on the flow of God's own state. Flow 94.9 FM. It is the pinnacle of all discussions. My name is Michael Oni. Now, this morning, we're uh, 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 talking Abia, of course, we look at a review of the Abia Fashion Week that took place and uh, also the small, medium uh, uh, scale uh, uh, enterprises, uh, the challenges in Abia. Of course, uh, a lot is being said about Abia State and you will agree with me that Abia State is undeniably the pan-African business hub in Nigeria, looking at Abba, the impact made by small-scale business uh, people in Abba. Of course, the state's business epic center earned the city of the uh, the city as uh, Monica as the Japan of Africa, and the products of these micro-industrial concerns are sold all over Nigeria and abroad. But we're so concerned about the quality. How are we sure that um, uh, some of these products uh, sold uh, outside Abia? coming from Abia State uh, are of quality and these are some of the issues that we form the conversation this morning even as we have uh, Sam Hart, Barrister Sam Hart in the studio joining me this morning on the platform on Flow FM. He's the Director General of Abia State Marketing and Quality Management Agency. Glad to have you join us. Welcome to the platform. Thank you very much Michael. Always a here with you all right so let's begin abba fashion week it is not the first time i think this is the second time and uh, it's uh, came out very successful so much uh, of the gains i would like you to talk about now uh what do we expect after this fashion week because it goes beyond um, having a successful event but then the ripple effect uh in the pockets of abians <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Michael, and good morning, uh, our dear listeners. Now, about Fashion Week, uh, what do we expect after the Above Fashion Week? It is the ripple effect, the multiplier effects of uh, such a, a, a huge event, uh, both for the uh, designers, for the models, for every participant, as a matter of fact. And it has already started. Okay. Even by merely posting the pictures of the outcome, of that fashion week uh, on social media platforms a lot of inquiries have come in hey i want this hey who made this hey can i have the contact of this person hey can i you know and that has started they've been supplying their details that we've been supplying the details we've been supplying their information and all of those who participated in last year's above fashion week will tell you that their fortunes uh took a, a an upward swing uh, okay. in the aftermath of their participation and this is what we're replicating this year again interesting so how was the um uh, the organization how did you get to select uh, the uh, the agencies that participate which should i call them agencies now the exhibitors the, the exhibitors now the fantastic showcasing designers uh, yes yeah okay so it was it went through a rigorous process uh it was handled by uh, my creative uh, partner, uh, Ugomde Obonna, the creative okay. director of uh, Toskimi uh, House of Fashion. Uh, he also being a designer, uh, set up a platform and invited interested designers who would wish to exhibit at the Abba Fashion Week to reach out. And certain criteria were set. And then, of course, uh, those who met the criteria ended up being the ones that uh, participated in the both the exhibition and then the runway show itself. The same thing happened with models too. We had a models call. We had a cast casting call for models interested in participating in ABBA Fashion Week and it was a deluge. They okay. actually, it was so interesting that models came in uh, from Lagos, from Port Harcourt, from wow. Abuja just to be a part of the event and at the end of the day uh, we selected 70 of them, you know, and then we camped them uh, at a hotel and they rehearsed and they practiced and at the end of the day yeah, that's how come you saw you saw the uh, synchrony you saw the yeah. coordination the organization because there was prior uh, preparation and rehearsal of what you saw it was logistically uh, challenging it, it was quite a huge undertaking but mm. we give all the glory to god that everything coalesced beautifully at the end of the uh, day uh, so, some analysts are of the opinion that uh, abba as the commercial hub looking at uh, the products coming from that uh, axis of the Ab of abia state is not yet ripe for such an event about fashion week i don't know how you want to prove that to them that 
maybe ABBA is ripe enough even for more than ABBA Fashion Week. ABBA has always been on the map. ABBA okay. has always been uh, the entrepreneurial, the fashion, uh, limiting it to fashion now, the fashion mm-hmm. capital of West Africa. I remember when the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osimbajo, uh, came to ABBA for the uh, MSME clinic. Uh, he said as a young lawyer, uh, more than 30 years ago, about 40 years ago, that himself and his colleagues, all the suits that they were wearing as young lawyers, that they used to travel to ABBA to come and make the suits that they wore as young lawyers to go to court. So that he's quite familiar with ABBA, that this is where they got the best materials and the best tailors to make their suits since they couldn't afford foreign suits. Minister for Works and former Thank governor you. of Lagos State, Babatunde Raji Fashola, also a senior advocate of Nigeria, also came to ABBA. And he said, as a young man, he used to come with his mother. His mother was a yellow judge. She was selling clothes. He used to come with his mother to Abba to select the best fabric and go back to Lagos to go and sell. So he is also familiar with Abba. So everybody has an Abba story. Everybody knows that Abba is synonymous with fashion. And the only problem is that Abba dropped off the radar at some point because of a multiplicity of challenges. But you will agree with me that since the advent of the OKZ Iqbazo administration, Abba is back on the map. ABBA has been put back and every effort has been made by the governor to ensure that the entrepreneurs in ABBA, the creatives in ABBA, are given a sense of reckoning and they are back. And you do not light a candle and put it under your table. You put it uh, on the lampstand. And what we're doing with events like this, the ABBA Fashion Week, you know, the ABBA Creative Entrepreneurs Award and all of that is to let the people know that ABBA is back. And ABBA okay. is here to stay, and there is no better time than now. Okay, let's uh, do a review of uh, the ABBA Fashion Week for those uh, exhibitors that participated and um, how the multiplier effect on their income. I'm so particular about their income and also the multiplier effect uh, for Abia state government beyond the exhibitors now mm. for the state government. Mm. Uh, you know, it goes beyond uh, organizing such an event, but what does the state government? gaining from such a very huge event an economically buoyant citizenry uh, translates to an economically buoyant states people are more willing and able to pay their taxes and to pay what is required of them if their businesses are booming so the primary responsibility of government of course is to create the enabling environment for businesses and enterprise to thrive now events like this events like the above fashion week are created to shine light on the creative sector of the Abia economy, the Aba economy, which is a huge chunk of the uh, Abia economy. And if the creatives in Aba are the light is on them, they are getting new orders, they are getting new customers, they are getting new confidence to be able to produce more. Uh, one of them, uh, to Skimmy House of Fashion, did a post on Facebook. He said last year he made 4,500 and something clothes and distributed. And that this year he set a target for himself for 10,000 clothes. He participated in Aba Fashion Week last year. And he said, as of uh, the close of November, he had done 9,850 clothes, which, which means he's going to surpass his target for this year. So if a tailor, one tailor, has been able to make 10,000 clothes in a calendar year, it would not be a problem for him to be, be able to pay the taxes and levies that are you know, levied to him. So okay. this is the intention at the end of the day. So a buoyant citizenry, a buoyant creative sector translates to more willingness and capability and ability to pay the taxes that are levied by government. Okay, before we get to the point of uh, selling what we have in Abba uh, Mm. out outside Abia State and also outside Nigeria to the continent and also outside the continent, a standard has to be set. Mm -hmm. There should be quality. Have we gone beyond the uh, semantics of now Abba you they wear now? You know there is this. It is Abba is synonymous to you're wearing a fake product. Mm. Have we gone beyond that? Yes, Michael, we have gone beyond that, and I'm glad you asked me this question because it gives me the opportunity to clarify that. Abba used to be synonymous with fakery, with with you know substandard product, okay. with, with, with with counterfeit and with copies, you know. But that's another ingenious thing that the governor did. He resumed office and he said, "I am only going to wear articles of clothing." that are made in Abba or made in Abia State, as the case may be. And what that did was to give those, and he was, he didn't stop there. He would say, I'm wearing Fadamasi, I'm wearing Toskimi, I'm wearing, you know, all of these guys. And it now gave them confidence to say, if the governor can wear our clothes, then we do not need to call it Versace or Prada 
or Gucci with one C or Prado or whatever to be able to sell it. So they regained their confidence and then they started uh, doing this. And then my agency, the Abbey State Marketing and Quality Management Agency, we also held a lot of outreaches mm -hmm. and a lot of reach out to these creatives to impress upon them the need to ensure quality. And then we did set examples with those who bought into our mantra okay. by showing them how we've been able to improve the fortunes of those who partnered with us by being authentic by being original and then by ensuring quality in what they are doing and then the best example to show is to show example of success so once the others saw that these people who have embraced quality who have embraced standard are making it and we're giving them big businesses others are also motivated to get into the basket and also do well so yes the the drive is yielding its results the governor is leading the charge himself by setting the example of wearing their their product which has given them confidence to be able to produce and then it opens up their creative minds so the 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 tailors in Naba now are doing michael amazing things because they are now more confident you know we've also governor has been able to expose them globally so they've seen global best practice so they've raised their game so it's no longer correct to say that aba products in fact they will I'm, I'm, i was very proud even on social media and prominent on social media somebody you know mentioned ah somebody posted something that was fake and the person said ah this must have come from aba a lot of people responded to the person to say ah you do not say it's no longer fashionable, fashionable to say that aba uh, something fake is from aba that don't let uh, some heart catch you you know something fake is no longer from aba aba is now known for creativity for ingenuity and for originality uh, so we've crossed that, that brings to question the area of uh, manufacturing industrially mm. uh, on a very large scale now looking at the challenges surrounding uh, smes not only in aba not only in uh, abia but also in nigeria mm. have they been able to break that barrier there are barriers, Michael, and uh, I'm glad you mentioned that not only in Abia State. There are barriers with uh, even federal government policies. There are, there are barriers with trade policies. There are barriers, you know, importation is quite, quite uh, hectic. You know, cost of uh, 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 foreign exchange, which is the major uh, exchange of, of, of uh, importing uh, goods, what you paid for or rather what you quoted yes. uh, to buy may not be the price by the time your goods will arrive and all of that. And locally here too, yes. We have certain challenges, infrastructural and, you know, all of that. But there are concerted efforts. There are associations and organizations. Luckily, because of the prominence of ABA, the president, the current incumbent sitting president of the National Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Agriculture, Nasima, is an industrialist from ABA, Ide John Udabala. Okay. You know, he is the yes. president. So he understands these problems and he is interfacing both at the federal and the state level. And I assure you that the administration of Governor Kizik Bazu enjoys a most robust relationship with the informal sector, with the business sector in Aba and Abia State through constant interface and constant participation in the activities. So these conversations are ongoing and all of these problems have been looked into holistically. All right. It is the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM Monday edition. Of course, uh, we're talking SMEs in Abia State, of course, looking at uh, the just concluded Aba Fashion Week and also the challenges uh, SMEs are facing in Abba. We're getting to that point. Uh, we're speaking with Barrister Sam Hart, the Director General of Abia State Marketing and Quality Management Agency. Now, let's uh, go straight to some of the peculiar challenges being faced by SMEs in Abba. Uh, if you can highlight some of them, I know some of them. They, they do complain of uh, multiple taxation. Have you been able to overcome that? Then the issue of roads also, it's a very, very huge challenge for them, especially not only uh, uh, the tailors or mm -hmm. those uh, running SMEs mm -hmm. in Abba, but also uh, the customers. You know, they come. some of them come from outside uh, uh, Abia State and of course not getting their ways through to their clients might be a very, very uh, difficult task. Mm -hmm. Now, how uh, have you been able to... Uh, uh, look beyond this bar barrier and also um, project made in our product beyond that it's a very very big issue thank you very much michael and what i will not do and what i believe the abia state government also will not do is to insult the sensibilities of citizenry and residents of aba and abia state by saying that everything is el dorado okay we have challenges and that is the bare fact. We have infrastructural challenges and we have issues with our roads and all of that. Okay. But again, what is also very important that we put 
uh, very clearly and on the table is a juxtaposition in Paripasu between what was the situation before the advent of this administration and what is the situation today. Lest we forget, prior to 2015, it was quite difficult to access any part of ABBA whatsoever. And ABBA had lost its market share and businesses had moved elsewhere. You know, but then the OKC Bazo administration came in and then he ventilated the city. We have roads, Umuola, Ukebu, you know, all of those roads were open. Alternative access was, was open into Aba. And we have these things ongoing. And of course, some of the roads that were built, even though, yes, we had issues with some of them, but then they are being revisited and concerted efforts are ongoing. We will not say that everything is okay, but we also want it to be clear that we are not where we used to be. And the only challenge is that because uh, if there are 1,000 bad roads in Aba, even when you fix 100, like the administration has done 100 and something now, even when you fix 100, it's, it seems like a drop in an ocean that because the other ones are still yearning for that attention. And of course, anybody that you have not done the street passing in front of uh, uh, the, uh, his house, he will tell you that you have not done anything because the development has not reached where they are and government is a continuum as the governor keeps uh, telling us all the time he will do the one he can do and then the next administration will come and continue from wherever he stopped and continue doing it it is not possible within the confines of the resources available to abia state for all the problems to be tackled at the same time it is just not imaginable and it is uncharacteristic and uncharitable to compare us with other states who are financially more buoyant than us who had a robust foundation of uh, infrastructure already on ground before incumbent administrations came in. You understand? Okay. There were infrastructural deficits that were inherited by the administration and the governor has uh, uh, tremendously done, done well uh, comparatively compared to what he met on ground. And yes, we admit that there are still lots of areas that are yet to be touched and I assure you that the governor is not sleeping. He concerted efforts are being made to ensure that as much impact is made before the end of his uh, time. Let's look at other barriers mm -hmm. uh, beyond uh, the issue you of road. You mentioned taxation. Taxation. And again, the, gov the government and the governor has taken steps. I'm sure you're aware. I'm sure it's been announced on your station. The governor, uh, the government is launching ISAV, which is a combined uh, tax bracket, m more or less. The government has taken drastic uh, measures to ban uh, farming out and contracting out of taxations uh, to, to, to Abians and to the citizenry. There are no more uh, tax consultants, so to speak. And everything is now consolidated in one basket. Every payment must go to a central government server. Well, more, this, like, more like a treasury. This yeah, treasury yeah, yeah, yeah. The TSA. So this government. is intended to ensure that there are no issues of multiple taxations. The Board of Internal Revenue is being rejigged uh, and also being strengthened to ensure that everything that is you are aware you are given one single consolidated uh, uh, levy or rather uh, demand notice and you go and pay to a designated government account and you are covered so you do not have the situation where uh, xyz company limited gives you a, a, a demand notice to say i represent ministry of trade this one says i represent asepa this one says I no government has put a stop to all of that and then now we have a consolidated uh, tax window where you pay everything into a designated government account and you do not have to bother about uh, touts and you know brigands and people coming to forcefully trouble you so long as you're a law-abiding tax-paying citizen okay power is a very big issue not yeah. only in abia mm -hmm. but also outside abia state for mm -hmm. smes mm -hmm. how have you been able to I'll also break that barrier of power. There was a time geometric was mentioned. I don't know if it is mm. functioning at the moment. Mm. And we have the epileptic uh, power supply across board, not thank, only in Abba. Thank you, Michael. And fortuitously, and to the glory of God, I was in South Africa uh, uh, three weeks ago with the governor. And we were at uh, the Intra African Trade Fair uh, on the invitation of the president of the African Export Import Bank, Professor Benedict Rama. And one of the outcomes and the key outcome of that trip for the governor and for abia state is that the governor stood there and geometrics power signed a 50 million dollar grant with african export import bank for the refinancing of geometric power which will lead to their immediate operationalization you know this is and the president of uh, the afrexim bank uh, professor benedict orama said clearly that this deal is kudos to the governor of Abia State who has visited him in Cairo, Egypt. I was also with him on two different occasions to plead with him to expedite action on this particular facility because of the impact and benefits that it is going to have 
on the economy of Abia State and Aba in particular, which is the SME uh, capital of West Africa. And Michael, I assure you, of course, this is Afrexim Bank, so it's not local politics or anything. It's a global institution. And $50 million is, is a lot of money. And if it is pumped into geometric, it will help already because of the delay. Uh, some of the turbines were now unserviceable or okay. had, they have been replaced new ones have been brought in i'm constantly in touch with uh, professor barton Naji, the president of geometric and this project is is very dear to the governor so he has asked some of forces aid to stay on professor bat to ensure that so i'm giving you first-hand information and factual information geometric is back on stream and abia is lucky you see the, the thing is we always had these beautiful plans it's just that you know various factors will come into play to truncate them abia is going to be the first state in nigeria to have uninterrupted power supply because it's in the ring fence area geometric is the first power station in nigeria to have license to generate uh, transmit and distribute its own power you were not feeding to the so national the, the, grid. The, the issue uh, between geometric and mm. uh, the disco that we that that we have here in the southeast, mm. I, I understand there were issues. There were back and forth. Uh, you don't own the license. Yeah. We have the license for yeah. the federal government. Has yeah. that been settled? I assure you, Michael. Again, you're speaking to someone who has been a part of this process, okay. and, and I'm involved in all of this. So I'm not give that. I'm not stuttering. I'm telling you factually. I was also on the delegation that the governor went to the then Minister of Power. Then it was Power, Works and Housing. Uh, Babatunde Raji Fashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. He is now Works and Housing. But then he was Minister of Power also. And the governor led a high power delegation himself. Speaking to Fashola as a former governor, they respected themselves at that level. And he said, my state needs, it, needs this. My people need this. Can you intervene? And Babatunde Fashola San intervened then as minister, brought uh, interstate uh, uh, electric uh, which are the concessionaires for Enugu uh, Disco Chief, Chief Emeka Ofo and his company and then brought geometric and this issue has been resolved. So okay. we do not have that problem of uh, any rancor between geometric and Enugu Disco. It has been resolved. It was just an issue of refinancing because of the delay that was uh, uh, caused by all of this rancor made the, those equipments uh, to be unserviceable at some point and they needed more funding to be able to you know uh, revitalize them and all of that that has been resolved now and i assure you and i'm telling you authoritatively that there, there are no issues anymore things are going on if you go to the osisioma plant now you see new activity and new regeneration it's going to take a while to of course test all of these things again and fire them back on but it is absolutely on course michael interesting it is the platform the pinnacle of all discussions right here on flow 94.9 fm the flow of god's own state and we're looking at uh, the smes the challenges they are facing in abia state and also a uh, review of the just concluded Aba fashion week we're speaking with barrister stam hart he's the director general of the abia state marketing and quality management agency i will take a break now when we return we get uh, your thoughts of course uh, on the topic of discussion today and also you can join the conversation on our facebook page flow 949 fm we're live on facebook you can watch uh, what is happening in the studio and also you can drop your messages on 09065108289 and definitely when we return we will throw the lines open stay tuned yes indeed it is still the platform the pinnacle of all discussions right here on flow 94.9 fm the flow of god's own state of course we deal with those critical issues we dissect them so that you can make uh, better decisions in the nearest uh, future we're looking at uh, the Aba fashion week they just concluded the Aba fashion week and also the challenges uh, being faced by smes in Aba, and also how the government is confronting uh, those challenges speaking with uh, the director general of the Abia State Marketing and Quality Management Agency, a barrister Sam Hart. I will be throwing the lines open very soon, but just before I throw the lines open, the issue of Osikaba Abia, uh, you cannot appear on this show without talking about it. Uh, uh, your agency has been at the forefront of uh, promoting Osikaba Abia, and uh, some critics of the government have come out to say, we only see Osikaba during the <laughs> Yule tide, <laughs> right? the Christmas, the New Year, and uh, after uh, the December period, we're done. 
and uh, it reappears november period and <laughs> you start selling your rice so how do you go about it is it true it is uh, it's natural that uh, sales spike in december i mean it's not okay. just usikapa every rice uh, if you go to every street corner now you see heaps and heaps of bags of rice people are selling because of the festivities and the yuletide of course but the honest truth michael is that usikapa is a year round uh, a commodity so okay. to speak and yes we have a enough stock to meet every demand it's just that the demand increases during christmas for well, why is it that uh, people get to hear about it only during the yule tide we, we've December, been, we've been talking period. about it and sales are ongoing uh, all of last year but you know covid and all of that we met the demands and you know even government was supplying government was distributing churches and other organizations and all of that so it's not entirely true to say that it's just that like i said it's natural uh, the demand increases during Yuletide. The publicity and the visibility mm -hmm. increases during Yuletide. But, you know, but it is available all year round. It's just that we just increase activities around it during the Yuletide for obvious reasons. But it is available all year round. You have my word on that. Okay. You can be part of the conversation. 0808-182-6949 or 0811-605-2949. You can also drop messages on 906 510 Now, let's uh, look at the area of quality control. Again, mm. I'm taking you back to what, no what, 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 are, what are the checks that you've put in place to ensure uh, that uh, our people do not uh, sell substandard products? No matter how uh, you uh, arrange everything, there mm. will definitely be a Judas no, among no. the 12 Abs and absolutely. We, we, we've seen projects coming from Aba mm. and uh, not projecting the made in Aba campaign well mm. in the public mm. so Th thank you Michael for that question now uh, part of the work that we're doing is perception reorientation okay. you understand and then uh, a challenge that we're dealing with is that Aba is uh, an order market uh, so to speak if I can break that down Aba produces to order you know you have lots of people coming in from the west african coast from the sub-saharan african coast and they will say we want ten thousand sleepers we want five thousand shoes and all of that and they come with their specification of how they want you to do it and what they want you to write on it you understand so that is one of the challenges that we're facing if we're telling you you must write made in aba for 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 every product that you make and then somebody is coming from Burkina faso to say that my customers in in Burkina Faso only buy my shoe if I write Gucci on it, you know. So make my shoe for me and put Gucci on it. So you have that challenge of trying to uh, reorientate someone who is dealing with his primary uh, okay. market. But then th that's just one aspect of it. We have all the aspects, and I can tell you we're working with the Leather Products uh, Manufacturers Association of Abia State, LEPMAS, and their members have been quite receptive. And you'll be very surprised, uh, Michael, that a lot of the products that are coming out of ABA today bear proudly made in ABA. And they are selling all over the place. I remember mm. we were in the UK recently where we took some of these products. And they are selling in the UK as proudly made in ABA uh, uh, products. So yeah. progress has been made. Hello. Good, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Michael. You're welcome. Uh, good morning, Barista. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. yeah it's Alvin. I'm calling you from Denny. All right, I'll I agree to you, Alvin. Yeah, I must commend Governor Ipazo for what he's doing in the area of small and medium scale development enterprise. Honestly, this is one area Governor has done well, and even those in opposition have acknowledged that the Governor has done so well. Uh, recently, the Defense Automated Shoe Factory was. Uh, I think uh, opening like that by the senior president himself. And this, uh, what, what the governor is doing, a whole lot of job opportunities have been created. So we we'll continue to encourage our youth to keep into these uh, areas. I must commend you, Barista. For you people are really driving home the dreams of the governor. I, I must commend you. You are really doing a, a very good job. In the area of uh, right production, too, uh, what Governor Ibazu did is so much, you know, encourage people farmers to go into rice farming. If you come to them, they are most say, you might keep on asking about uh, the capital. Yes, we are really producing and uh, just like uh, the barrister said, if you go around you see heaps of uh, rice, it's, it's massive. Uh, building a uh, cottage rice means uh, in different communities. Uh, in that, uh, it's All right, so, I am giving you people kudos and 
call got not to stay in your airport. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alvin. <clears throat> Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform on Flow FM. Morning, Michael. You're welcome. My name is Joy, calling from Abamo. All right, Joy. Yeah, it is good that the governor has done well in SME. But the question is, as the financial asset reflects in the state, it's not all about telling us this, that the governor did this, the governor did that. As the money reflects in the state, in the, the infrastructure development in the state, look at the rules in Aba. Where are the money getting from any going to? That's what we should be asking ourselves. Yeah, the governor has done well. So, Mark, if I may ask you, if Abia is your own company and the governor is doing like this in terms of area, uh, infrastructural development, will you still keep him as your uh, managing director? Please. Mm. Thank All right, Joy. Uh, I'm sure Sam Hart will respond to that. Uh, keep your questions uh, coming. Wisdom Ikechuku on our Facebook page says, Aba has no place in modern 21st century city. Is a city regarded as common traders to compare to other cities in Nigeria and Africa like Cairo and Lagos. What effort is the Abia State Government doing uh, to attract uh, multinational investors to Aba? That's coming from Wisdom on our Facebook page. Thank you, Wisdom, for sharing uh, your thoughts with us. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Hello, good morning. You're welcome. My name is John. I'm calling from Umaya. All right, John. See, whatever the governor is, is good. But it is being rubbish by what those so, so-called the task force are doing there. The governor is trying to create an atmosphere of people coming in to buy things in Aba. Now somebody will carry his own vehicle, not a not not a commercial vehicle, his own vehicle, go to a bar to buy those shoes, to buy these other things. Our task force will hold him and collect him forty five thousand naira. What is the state government doing? Mm. It's very, very unfortunate. And there are so much in Abba, you cannot even escape. If you don't pay them, they will break your head, they will remove your battery, remove your normal place, and disgrace you there because there are many. What is the government doing about it? You are telling people to come to Abba, but those people that are coming to buy things are being disgraced and, and obtained. What are they doing? All right, John. John uh, it's very, very important for him to, for him to, to, to talk about that. He's right. scaring investors from Abba. All right, John. Thank uh, you. Some heart will definitely respond to you. Yes, yeah. glad to have you join us. What's your name and where you're calling from? Good morning, my friend. This is Chiboy calling from Momo. All right, welcome, Chiboy. Yes, good uh, Mr. Uh, good morning, the director in the studio. Good morning, Chief Boy. I must commend, I must commend this last caller because this is it's just, it's just a time of spoke in my mind. Now to go to to go train more on that. You see that all all you see that even the name man is here. Any you see that most of these vehicles that are coming from other neighboring states. You will see all these task force, once before you know, you will see them, they will find them straight to that place uh, beside the, uh, in that secretary's compound. Before you know what is happening, they will remove the battery, this one, that one. This is how you see people complaining and complaining and complaining. Even some, I, I ever had one driver vying that they must say to prepare that whatever car that is having a their registration, you never call their seat. Now, the attraction of this thing is, uh, um, is uh, doing all this thing also is uh, very good. But you can never use the job if there is nobody to personalize it. All then right. another thing I want, to, I want to highlight, I want to now say that. Yes, quickly. Um, when we talk about uh, all this thing, yes, the government is trying. No, but the taxpayers and uh, the good ideas want to see the government has done this. This is what is, is cost the state government from the money and from tax paying or from tax or from whatever. This is what is cost the government and not government help the metrics. We of which know that government has no one naira to that effect uh, to, to, uh, to put them there. We want to see this is what is cost the state government to do this to do that. Thank All right. You. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, let's get uh, more reactions on the phone line. Who is on the line? Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Michael Oni. Good morning. Oh, on the line. Good morning, Barista Samhat. Uh, good morning, my brother. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, Samhat, you've really said a lot about what government can do. So, 
I've been able to do for the past six years uh, when it comes to small and medium enterprises. I give it to him. Sincerely, I give it to the governor. But I would appreciate if you can throw more light as regards to Med and a bar, uh, uh, a concert that you guys did at London. That, I think that was last month, if I'm not mistaken. You did something like that in London uh, uh, some, some weeks ago. And uh, when it comes to a small and medium enterprise, Governor Kedip Bazo uh, stand tall. And I am pleading with uh, our, uh, our youth, please make sure you do one, you, you, you venture into one thing or the other. In other say, in as much as Governor Bazo has given us this enabling environment for us to thrive in our own little way, we should also help the government to uh, uh, achieve their aim. Because it's very, very important for us to understand that today, because of youth receiveness, uh, the government has been able to uh, marshal out a lot of things that can be able to benefit the youth. I remember uh, the, the DG of uh, a small and medium enterprise uh, uh, bank, SME Bank, yes, Abia uh, uh, SME Bank, was established by Governor Kizipas, and they began to give us more small loans for small and medium enterprise business so, so that they can be able to stand on their own. We should right. give it to this governor that has been able to do all this. Somehow, I give you kudos. You're doing wonderfully well. Made in uh, Aba has really turned the fortune of uh, uh, Aba uh, uh, businessmen and women. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much to the work which you did very. Yes, you can respond to the questions. Thank you, Michael. I, 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 I know we're short of time, so I'll just I'll just uh, flip through them real quick. Okay. Uh, Alvan, thank you very much for acknowledging. I mean, you're on ground. You're in Bende. So you understand all the production that is going in there with Osikapa, uh, Abia, and all the millers. Uh, Michael, real quick, uh, yes. I, I hope we know that prior to Governor Ipazu's administration, Abia rice millers used to take, or rather rice farmers, used to take their rice to Ebonya State or to neighboring states to go and mill. And it is counted for these neighboring states as their own production quota. And that's why Abia did not feature on the map of rice producing states because you only count where you produce and not where you farm incidentally okay. so but governor Ipazo has been able to set up five uh, cottage mills for the milling of rice in Abi state in acha in isukwato uh, in ozakoli in bende in in ofeme even in omoha here and these are all working round the clock and that is why abia is now producing its own rice and abia is now in the committee of states that are rice production uh, producing, producing uh, states. state and yes as alvan assured you year round rice is being produced and it is not only uh, during christmas it is produced uh, year round that's for alvan george uh, uh you know uh, the financial aspect reflecting george i dare say that for every sme and most uh, uh, creatives in aba uh, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, and especially because of the efforts of the Governor Kezekwazo administration, their fortunes has drastically in improved. I'd say something jocularly. Any tailor you see in Abba Bilam, you get money because they have increased production. They have moved from two, three machines, small shop to factories. I dare say there are many clothing factories in Abba now because anything from 50, 60 machines is now a factory. It's no longer a shop. You know, and most of this, I can count 20, 50 tailors that have partnered with us that have all expanded their production. So that is financial aspect reflection because they have, I mean, they've built houses, they've, their, their, their condition of living has drastically improved. And it is because of the effort of the uh, governor to improve their work. Uh, Wisdom is asking about multinational investment in Abia State. Michael, recall that last year, Abia came third in foreign direct investment in nigeria only behind lagos and abuja because we received 56 million dollars foreign investment into abia state in the year 2020 third nationwide not any other state abia came third this year alone recall that we just came back from south africa where we signed a deal for 50 million dollars after exit bank investment into geometric power which is an abia state that is foreign investment so with the other investments that have already happened even before this 50 million dollars it means abia is set to surpass what it did in 2020 by making even uh, more foreign direct investment which will also place us i believe third because lagos and abuja are always in the billions of uh, dollars so yes wisdom a lot of money is coming into abia state i can assure you of that john from whom i had talked about tax tax force i mentioned earlier on michael that the gov government uh, is launching i serve you know a centralized uh, tax uh, collection system where and then i also mentioned specifically that government has outlawed 
uh, farming out of revenue windows uh, to subcontractors. They are the ones that constitute uh, the, the all of this now, menace. The and it, it, it permeates where, to the where, local government. Where, when state, are we going to see that uh, <coughs> uh, in, uh, in, in effect? In in effect. In, in, yes, because we still see some of these uh, touts. I agree. Uh, on the I streets. Agree. I and agree. They harass Again, the people. Uh, I, I said something when I came on the air, Michael. I, as a person as Sam had, I, I will not abuse the sensibilities or insult the sensibilities of, of the average man on the street. And I believe that the IBS state government, as a policy, also will not insult the sensibilities of the average man on the street by denying that there are issues and there are challenges. I will not deny the existence of issues and challenges. So I know, I mean, I'm, I do not live in a bubble. I drive on the street. And I know that there are the activities of this, 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 uh, you know, uh, unscrupulous people who uh, constitute all of these menaces. To them, they are carrying out the assignment given to them by the revenue that they have bought and paid for, and they are trying to recoup their money by any means possible. This is a blot and a slight on the reputation of the state, and I can assure you that it has been discussed at the highest level, which led to this decision I've just told you about now to. Uh, you know, retrieve every no local government, no ministry, no agency uh, has the right anymore. A secular was issued by the Secretary to the State Government okay. banning uh, issuing of revenue contracts to any agent. They are the ones, it is their people that go to cause all of this mayhem that John and Chiboy uh, is referring to. And I'm assuring both of them that this thing will soon be a thing of the past. Owakwechi Debre, thank you so very much uh, for the credit that you've given us. And we hear you very well. You said you wanted me to talk about the Portsmouth uh, exhibition. Yes, a lot has been said about that and uh, as the person in the middle of it all, it is important that I clarify. Again, the governor uh, has insisted that ABBA must be taken global. ABIA must be taken global. What we did in the United Kingdom is that we found partners in the United Kingdom uh, Mobugichi Eberendo. He's an Abian from Omaha South here and he lives in, in Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. He's a young man. He's the leader of the Nigerian community in Portsmouth and he said they are hungry for Nigerian products, for okay. made in Abba products. They've been following the campaign and they want to be wearing our products and they have a market for it that we should come and hold an exhibition uh, with them. He already has a shop. He has a big shop uh, a, a, at the uh, mall in Portsmouth there and so myself and my brother Chine Enwogu, we went to the UK, went to Portsmouth with truckloads of made in Abba goods and we took them to the UK there and these things were displayed uh, at the shop, at the mall in Portsmouth and in the entire Nigerian community, students, they mopped up every of this thing, Riabani, uh, FabQ and all of them, the products that we went with, they mopped them up and then we've established, and this is what we do, myself and China especially, we do not, why we are, we, uh, if I, with every sense of modesty, why we are succeeding with these people is that we do not collect from them, instead we create opportunities for them and we give them. We have now linked those people directly with the producers and we are not middlemen they are talking to them directly and, in and a the relationship and the relationship been has been sustained and okay. it has blossomed into new things Rayabani is now supplying directly to the uk fabq is supplying directly to shops in the uk and this is the effect and the essence of the things that we do and what we're doing so yes uh this is what we went to portsmouth to do to open that door of a uh, handshake between the creators and the producers in a bar and uh, businesses and shops in the United Kingdom and I can tell you that it is successful and it is currently ongoing. Alright, let's uh, get more reactions on the phone lines. Glad to have you join us. What's your name and where are you calling from? Good morning. My name is Enoch. You're welcome Mr. Enoch. Good morning. Um, if we propose domestic power in Ebercom and ensure constant power supply we cannot wait to see and enjoy this quality. Because the present power company has protected people and their businesses by not supplying power holding. As if that is not enough, it is posing a extortionate deal on this customer. This is unacceptable indeed. If there is a constant power supply, we will see how industrious other people are and more of their uh, interviews. I think uh, did you get that? Uh, yeah, okay. he was talking about geometric, uh, okay. and geometric about, power. You know, yes. Challenges with with power. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, get more reactions on the phone lines. Zero eight zero eight one eight two six nine four nine zero eight one one six zero five two nine four nine. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome. Good morning, Mr. Michael. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Barrister. I'm here. Good morning, sir. Yes, I am Victor. I'm calling from Amity Dick. 
You're welcome, yes, Mr. Director. I want to encourage your government. I've heard and seen what you are doing. I want to encourage you to do more, to do better than what you are doing now. By going into the nooks and crannies of this state, especially through schools and colleges, that is where you get the future Nigerians who are supposed to do better in what we are doing. Through schools, please encourage the establishment of skills, skill acquisition, because that is what Japan did today. Japan is one of the highest economies. When we go through schools, encourage people to acquire skills by rehabilitating our schools and colleges, let students learn. Please do more to encourage the government to pay teachers their salaries so that they will have the responsibility. They will know it is their accepted responsibility to help Nigerians, to help Africans because Africans are in the forefront in this country, to help them so that they will help future uh, citizens of this state and the entire country at large to acquire skills that will help us in the future. That All is right. the area I want you to do more. Thank you. All right. Thank you for very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Hello. Good morning to you. Welcome. Hello. My name is uh, Felix Collins from Government Council. You're welcome, Mr. Felix. Thank you. I want to um, I want to commend your uh, marketing of budget in a very monumental achievement. Uh, but we want to know why, with all this monumental achievement, it has not reflected in the in the, the performance of the government in paying workers and pensioners in, in, in the state. What, what is actually wrong? And they're talking about uh, Abia Kitikapa. With, uh, with no money in the pocket of uh, pensioners and workers and everyone else, who will, uh, who will uh, be eating this uh, Christmas season? Yeah, right. Felix, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. And I think uh, Ben is asking the same question on our uh, SMS lines, asking how many of these products have been purchased by Abians because Abians do not have the purchasing power. I'm sure you have a statistics, you have a, the way you go about your checks and balances. Do Abians also patronize some of these products? And you're so much focused on ABBA. We also have uh, SMEs, we have creatives outside ABBA, here in Uma, here and other places in Abia. Are they carried, are they carried along? Uh, qu quickly, we have less than two minutes. Uh, to step out of the th thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. Uh, I'll start start with your with your last questions. Yes, uh, made in Aba. We keep and the governor has has made this distinction a number of times. It goes beyond the geographical location of Aba. It is just a metaphor for you know the entire Abia state. What is being made, and that's why we have graduated. We have made in Aba. We have made in Abia okay. because we have given Okwa. The, the highest equity, the highest publicity by any administration and, and uh, they've, they've ever had over time, you know, because they make equity, which is the only indigenous fabric that okay. is made in Igbo land. Uh, it's not even Ishago. Ishago is not indigenous to us. It's imported, not even the red cap. They're all imported. But equity is made by women in Ndoki, equity in Okwa East local government area of Abia State and the governor of course wears it regularly and we have been able to promote that and the money is going into the pocket of the women and they are all uh, doing better for that. So Omwai Hatu, the president of the uh, Omwai Hatu Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Agriculture, uh, Chief Chi, the Inkem Aroma, we work with him. He traveled with the governor uh, two weeks ago on a trip and, you know, we're doing a lot with him in Bangladesh and all of that. So, yes, we're also carrying businesses in Omwai along uh, Omekan Naya, uh, you know, uh, Chief Uzodim Mwakbara, okay. uh, the former president of the chamber. There's a lot going on with them. Uh, Felix from Government College uh, in Unum Lucient, uh, marketing Abia. How many of these products are purchased by Abians? A lot. Of course, we will not underrate the purchasing power of the people of Abia State. Again, I acknowledge that we have challenges, but that does not mean that we are destitute. Abians are not destitute, and they are absolutely uh, purchasing the products made in Abia. Victor, uh, De Victor from Ameki Beku, you are asking about technical capability in our schools and our colleges. Again, I recall, or rather, I urge us to recall 
that the administration of governor kese Pazu introduced the education for employment program e for e which ensured technical and vocational education revitalization in our secondary schools in Abia state recall also that there was a recent secular by government upgrading uh, the technical college here in afara and another government technical college and i think boys technical college in uh, in uh, aba you know and government has placed emphasis on technical and vocational education because not everybody will be suited for a white collar job okay. so it is important that at secondary level uh, our pupils you know uh the psychomot they, they are taught skills mm. which they can use you know to go into the world even if they do not intend to continue on a white collar trajectory at least they have the skills to do something so these are all well thought out uh Enoch finally uh, asked if uh, ever the geometric power project will come to stream i can give that assurance that all the bottlenecks have been resolved and every all all you know systems are go we are definitely going to have geometric power provide uninterrupted and according to the governor uninterruptible power uh, to abia state all right thank you very much mm. uh, barrister sam hart director general of the abia state marketing and quality management agency for joining us this morning on the platform on flow fm always my pleasure michael all thank right you. many thanks to the guests uh, and also you for participating and also listening the program returns on wednesday and also many thanks to my producer samson eze and akin loton tayelulu and the guys behind the visuals on our facebook page uh, stanley and chinedu do and do enjoy the rest of your day my name is michael oni